In this chapter, we're going to be talking about money growth and inflation. And uh, we'll look at some interesting questions. We'll talk about the relationship between money, inflation, and interest rates. We will also talk about how money supply, which is something we talked about in the last chapter, money supply affect real variables. And we'll talk about what real variables are, but you're familiar with at least a couple, like real GDP and real interest rates. So these are, these are basically variables that are corrected for inflation. And we want to understand, does any change in money supply affect those variables? Okay. We'll also be talking about hyperinflations, which are uh, situations uh, where the inflation rate is very, very high. It's it it's it exceeds fifty percent per month, okay. And we'll end by talking about some of the real costs of inflation. So let's get into the chapter, and think about inflation for a second. So we all know that inflation is a general increase in the level of prices, and that it erodes. the value of money so so let's take an example to illustrate this point now i really like to go to uh, get ice cream at buy right i don't know how many of you have been to buy right but buy right is is very close to dolores park and i like to get uh, one kid scoop of chocolate ice cream so one kid scoop scoop because I don't like to be feeling guilty about having ice cream. One kid scoop of chocolate ice cream. And that costs three dollars per scoop. Okay, so the price per scoop is given here. Now, let's say I told all of you that Byright sells uh, uh, excellent ice cream and all of you show up over there. Byright is going to see this excess demand and uh, Byright might decide to raise the price of the kid scoop to $4 a scoop. Okay, so what we can see, what we can say here then is that in that first scenario, when the price of the ice cream scoop was $3 a scoop, the value of money, and in this case, I'm talking about the value of a dollar, the value of a dollar is going to be 1 over 3 scoops, which is to say in a dollar, how many scoops could I buy? Okay, and in this case, when the price increased, I can say that the value uh, of that dollar is a fourth of a scoop. So one dollar can buy one quarters of a scoop. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that one over the price level is the value of one dollar and this is measured in goods it's not measured in dollars it's measured in what I can buy so we can with this example we at least understand one idea, which is to say that inflation drives down the value of money. So drives down the value of money. Now, in this chapter, we're going to be talking about 
the classical theory of inflation, which is known as the quantity theory of money. What it does is basically connect the two dots. So the quantity theory of money basically says that or basically establishes a relationship between the quantity of money and inflation. Okay, so if quantity of money goes up in the economy, we are going to see that inflation is rising. Okay, this is something we want to establish, but we want to understand how uh, this, uh, what is the mechanism driving it. So the reason why it was called the classical theory of inflation was because it was developed by classical economists. These were the earliest economic thinkers. Uh, and these were people like David Hume, Milton Friedman, Milton Friedman won the Nobel in uh, the economic sciences and, and actually said that inflation, let me write this down, that inflation, so he said this, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. That means, or which is to say that inflation is typically produced by a rapid increase in the quantity of money in the system than output. Okay, so that's the idea there. Now, one of the other things that we know is that the classical theory of inflation is, is very good in determining this relationship between quantity of money and inflation in the long run. Okay, so we're talking about many, many, many years uh, together. Okay, we're not talking about one to two years. We're not talking about the short run, but we are talking about the long run. So how is the quantity of money related to inflation in the long run? So this type of a theory is very good in determining that relationship between what's going on with uh, prices and inflation because of the quantity of money. Now, we're going to come at this question in or establish this relationship in two ways. The first way is going to be using a supply and demand diagram. And the second way is going to be a quantity equation. Okay, both of these ways are going to establish this relationship between quantity of money and inflation.